It's not just mock draft time on the Fantasy Footballers today. It is mega maka laka ding dong. The three of us are in as usual. And then we're bringing in three of the deucers to fill out some of the rest of these teams. A lot of analysis, a lot of players being talked about, some uh, some team projections, building those squads. How, do, how does Owl Borland do? C plus, maybe. Uh, but make sure you stay tuned. It is mock draft season because the NFL season is on its way. Leave us some comments about who you think won the draft and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. You you seem disappointed, Jason. I think it's not just me. I think Andy's a little disappointed as well. We thought there was a chance you'd... Uh, you'd mock draft time. Yeah. People have been kind of hankering for just a little something different on the intro and thought uh. that you would get involved. I see. It's a big day. It's the first time we're going to mock draft with the Deucers. And I thought we might get it in its mock draft time. Mm, see, I don't I don't see them as special. <laughs> That's fair. We so, are doing them every Saturday. I see this more as... Oh, I thought as, you meant the Deucers. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I was talking about. The mock about. draft is special. Yeah, well, it's, it's great. And it's like we're doing them a favor that they get to, to mock draft. Right. We're kind of taking this show down a notch. Yes. By including the deucers. Right. Because we are so kind. So why should I emphasize this particular episode? Right. I don't know if I'm in on any of this. <laughs> I like these guys. Yeah. I, I mean, like them too. They're just not special people. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. And I think you are very special. Welcome into a Saturday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Andy, Mike, and Jason, along with Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, uh, in the building is the rap scallion. On the microphone, but not present, is the Borgogin, and he will be <laughs> participating in uh, in the draft as well. When we say everyone's nicknames like in a line, it, it's a little ridiculous. It really emphasizes the just how ridiculous <laughs> this show yeah. is. But uh, we people have asked. People have asked for the mock draft episodes to include the Deucers. That's what we're going to do today. In fact, Mike, like a ding dong. see, one of them hit that button. That's how they contribute. Mike's going to draft from the one spot. Kyle from the four. I'm at the five. Uh, Al Borland, I enjoy this. He is at the seven, right ahead of Jason at the eight. And then the judge himself at the 10 spot in today's mock draft. That's going to be a lot of fun here at the top. We do have a quick question. I want to remind people about a couple of things. One, you can find us. Over on Twitter at the FF Ballers, and then our individual handles, which are both on Twitter and now, I don't know if you know, um, Threads it's so hot is right a now. thing. I'm threading. He's threading. Oh, I I'd be threading. Yeah, uh, Mike. Mike is just incredible threads. Uh, and you can find us on both Twitter and anything else that comes out this week at Andy Holloway at Jason FFL at FF Hitman. Uh, the main handle over there is at Fantasy Footballers. And on Twitter, it's at the FF Ballers. If you be threatened. No, people be. Um, we're, we're everywhere else as well. Uh, we'd love it if you'd follow the show. We're on YouTube. You can watch it. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. These are great episodes. If you've never experienced the YouTube, number one, experience the handsomeness. Number two, the, the <laughs> draft board will be up there. So, I mean, like, we do our best to convey everything that has happened in the mock draft, the players who are available, the players who were just drafted. But if you want to visually follow along, we make that possible. Yeah, the draft board is up there, and uh, today should be really interesting. Uh, we have, you know, this is this is a better representation of what your draft day would be like because there are plans and egos and human beings and uh, also, they know us pretty well. We know them pretty well. And so there there's, could be some, some gamesmanship involved in the mock draft, and uh, you'll get to witness all of that. 
The Ultimate Draft Kit is available, ultimatedraftkit.com. You'll want to check that out. I think the deucers are going to be leaning heavily on it today. That's yeah. what they told me, at least. It's the only reason I'm worried. We need it. So, um, yeah, ultimatedraftkit.com. Updates uh, very frequently over there. As soon as Dalvin Cook signs with the Jets, we'll update that, Jason, so you know where <laughs> he'll be ranked. Where, where's your concern meter? It's at a zero, Mike, because I am ignoring all of it. Okay. So I have no concerns. Free as a bird. Okay. But what's your real concern? Probably an eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our quick question from YouTube, Zach Williamson13 says, uh, what do you do about an active and otherwise good member of the league who is really just bad at fantasy and frequently makes very bad trades that make the rich richer? Be the rich. Be the richer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I mean, know your mark because every league has them, you know? And you gotta you gotta befriend that person. You gotta you gotta take your arm, put it over his shoulder, and bring him in close. Get all the players. I have been in leagues like this where it's almost it's like first one to yes? this player wins the day until the roster is depleted yep. and there's nothing left to get. It really is. A I time. drink your milkshake. <laughs> yes. I mean, I drink it up. <laughs> I mean, if they're in the league, you don't want to be on the sidelines while it happens. Um, I mean, there could be some altruistic answer here about teaching them how to play. After, or, or tell them about the show. Yeah, I was going to say, after someone else has taken first dibs I on their good players. Your <laughs> milkshake. Then yeah. you can tell them about the show. Tell, you know, it's like, hey, maybe, maybe get a little better. But don't do that before you have the opportunity to take those great players. How, yeah. do, how do you feel about the... Uh, like, if you could choose the active and otherwise good member of the league that makes bad decisions or the inactive player that is still competitive give me the active one that sucks it's better for the <laughs> league and better for me like that's that's pretty that's one of the easiest questions you've ever asked okay all right um it it seems like they should learn over time right they will i mean genuinely it's it well, I'm thinking I'm thinking through some of my leagues. It's it's a long process for some people. Uh Brooks had the idea of maybe you throw a little like a lot of the times when deals get done in our leagues, we throw a poll up and the league will vote on it. And maybe if they see the vote like enough times Yeah, but then they but might But then they might not be active. Yeah. Like you can only get dunked on so many times before you stop going up to block the shot. And you just like, yeah, yeah I'm not doing this anymore. So like the the polls have their, their boom place. shakalaka yeah yeah, yeah. Like, when when people are doing that and they're like uh, this is a ten to zero victory of who won this trade I I mean we we've certainly been in those leagues especially in dynasty where even the perceived rich get richer trade doesn't pan out that way mm -hmm. um, but I've definitely had trades I felt guilty for <laughs> like I get them done here's what happens if you have one of those people in your league. You make the trade. You get the players you want. You know that you've just raked them over the coals. And then you defend the league why it's good for the other players. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have <laughs> so to. So you can justify yourself. You have to say stuff like, I almost didn't take this trade. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. That is a good one. Yeah. I, I, did, I almost didn't do it. Hmm. There's a lot of risk here for me. Fantasy football can be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. You guys ready for this mock draft? Let's go. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, here we go. Like I said, Mike at the one spot. Kyle the Borgogan at the four spot. I'm at five. Jeremy Al Borland at seven. Jason's at the eight spot. And Brooks is drafting from the 10 spot. We went... 12-team half PPR, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench spots. And, Mike, you get to kick this thing off because you have the 101. It's your opportunity to finally take Chris Olave at the 101. Oh, yeah, that's he true. Is available. Yeah, the, the best part of the 101 is I can select any player ah. that I want. Uh, I would love to give 
a uh, I, w- I would love to start this draft off with some funky business, but I'm not going to. Uh, I will just say at the 101, I'm going to take Christian McCaffrey, but it does not bother me in the slightest. Do you want if you want to go Jefferson, Cup, um, Chase, Jamar Chase, Christian McCaffrey with the 101? That I think that is a perfectly rational thing to do for all four of those players. Well, here we go. The first pick by a producer, the Borgogan on the clock at 104. McCaffrey, Jefferson, and Cup off the board. I think we have uh, we've seen Cooper Cup's ADP rising. And here is uh, Jamar Chase on the board, who goes to <laughs> the Borgogan. Yeah. The, fir- the, the first four picks of the draft are pretty easy right now. Uh, this is... Uh, not my favorite situation here. I thought about I'm I'm sitting here at one oh five. Jamar Chase went to the Borgogan. Are you uh were you excited to see Chase drop there, Kyle? Yes. We talked about it on the Dynasty show. I'm super pumped this year. All right. Um I'm going to stay with the wide receiver run. I'm going Ooh, to take okay. Tyreek Hill at the one oh five. I don't really view those four players very differently. Yeah, um, Tyreek, I, I think, is also fine to include in those. So I, I, I did think a little bit about Travis Kelsey just because none of our mocks, I don't think any of us have taken him in the first. But uh, no, at, at 105, I'm going to take Tyreek Hill to compete with those uh, top three guys that went just before him. Jonathan Taylor goes off the board at 106, the second running back. So... Uh, Producer Borland is on the clock, and I think, I think you might be happy. I I am happy. Other than I, this didn't go the way I wanted it to. What I wanted to happen was was me to take Bijan here in front of Jason and leave him with Travis Kelsey. But with Austin Eckler on the board, I got to go there. Austin Eckler at one hundred and seven. Yeah, that is uh, that is upsetting because I did not think Austin Eckler would get to me at one hundred and eight. And he didn't. But when he goes right next to you, it just feels a little worse. Like if he went, uh, you know, he would have been my pick at the 105 where you took uh, Tyreek Hill. Uh, so, you know, and I would have felt better about him not being so close to me. At this point, obviously, Travis Kelsey's still there. I think uh, these other two guys, that might be an auto selection for them. I'm less bullish on a first round uh, tight end personally. Bijan is there. We know I love Bijan. He is fantastic, but fantastic. fantastic. Um, I have not drafted him much in best ball simply because I think right now he's being drafted basically at his ceiling. He's usually the third running back off the board. I don't even have him at running back three. I have him, You, I, I believe right now in my rankings, he's my running back five. I've got Saquon Barkley a little higher, and I've got Stephon Diggs here that I could grab. All that being said, I am going to grab Bijan. I haven't had him yet. I want to see how my roster turns out with him. Uh, this is, oh yeah, <laughs> and it's on brand. So I will take a first fake share of Bijan Robinson. Bijan at one hundred and eight, um, ahead of Nick Chubb and Barkley and Derrick Henry and Josh Jacobs, who I know our consensus uh, situation there is Josh Jacobs is at three as a group. Jacobs and Saquon both holding out as of right now. And, Mike, you were doing some research on that situation. Uh, Brooksy had asked me, do we need to start getting worried? What's the situation with so, the franchise tag? So July 17th will be the deadline for a multi-year extension. So I- anyone who was tagged with the franchise tag, um, that's when they can, you know, that's their final day. If they don't get a deal done, then you wait. You have to wait until the uh, the, the NFL season is over to get back to the the negotiation table with Tony Pollard is on the on the tag he signed his so like he's playing for the Dallas Cowboys this year he's guaranteed that 10 or 11 million dollars I cannot recall off the top of my head but we are currently watching Josh Jacobs Saquon Barkley and tight end Evan Engram of the Jacksonville Jaguars who are uh, big offensive players who were franchise tagged and have not yet signed those guaranteeing uh they're guaranteeing their money their spot on the team so it's just it's kind of watching the news to see if the the long-term deal i would think of the three the most likely to get done before the 17th would be evan engram because i think these these running backs are they're likely gonna just pass that date up they're gonna go through as long they're gonna miss as much camp as 
as they want to because if if you have not signed your franchise tag, you are not under contract. You are not you cannot be fined because you are not a contracted employee of that team. So they can they can just keep waiting and then eventually sign it and and then come back to the team. I do like I think the only risk though is like a team rescinding the franchise tag, but I'm not 100% sure when like if they're past the 17th if they can do that. So I would have to look that up. Uh Saquon went right after Bijan, Jason's pick at 108. This will be interesting here. Brooks on the clock at 110. What are you thinking about here? I've never had this guy on my roster, and it sounds like a lot of fun this year. We're going with Nick Chubb right oh, here in the first yeah, I round. Like it. I'm, I moved him up after our talk of the will he get more pass catching. And I think he'll he'll get at least – I didn't go out of control, but I bumped him from a 7% share up to I think a 9% share. and A 9% target share for Nick Chubb with what he does. I mean, he could be he could be the the best pick in the first round. Yeah, I mean he has the possibility of finishing at one on one overall. He yes. he did it over a ten week stretch last year, and that was without increased receiving work. He's capable of it, and I believe that that team is going to be very good. Stephon Diggs goes after Nick Chubb, and then Travis Kelsey at one twelve. Uh, and then we turn into C D Lamb and Devontae Adams coming around into the second round. Brooks back on the clock, Nick Chubb on the roster. Lots of options out there, including uh, running backs, Pollard, Jacobs, Henry, Brees Hall, uh, wide receivers like A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, among many others. Where are you going, Brooksy? Man, this one's tough, but I'm going to go A.J. Brown right here. Yeah, well, I like it. I do not think we've had A.J. Brown on a mock draft roster yet this offseason among the, the the three of us. So um, picked up by Brooks, Chubb, and Brown. Pretty guaranteed production in the first and second round for Brooksy. And then Patrick Mahomes goes at 204. Jason back on the clock, B. John Robinson on the roster, and a long wait after this pick. Where are you going? Well, this this format is two running backs, two wide receivers, and a flex, unlike underdog where it's you, you've got the third wide receiver. Uh, being it's a little bit more balanced, I – want to start running back, running back, and see how my team looks, considering I've got Josh Jacobs available. Uh, you, you're talking about I have two of my top five running backs, so I'm going to take Bijan Robinson and Josh Jacobs. I think that will set me up to shotgun approach wide receivers. Ultimately, that's a great start, and I would be very content with them in flipped spots. Sure. So, yeah. I mean, if you had gone Jacobs, Robinson, I mean, you got the same two players. Producer Borland back on the clock. Austin Eckler, the steal in the first round at 107 and the opportunity to go all Packers here on out. That's not going to happen, but oh, I am okay. going okay. to keep the T high with Jason here. I'm going to go Derrick Henry starting oh, running baby. back, running back as well. Oh, baby. Eckler, Derrick oh. Henry is the kind of running back room that you, when you see it on the opposing team, you you're not looking forward to that match. No. It feels like you start leaking. It feels like a combination <laughs> of Eckler and, and Derrick Henry where you win a championship in the league of record last year. Oh, is that what is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, <laughs> baby. Those are my two running backs. You won last year, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Never forget it. I did. <laughs> well, I'll make sure you don't. <laughs> All right. Uh I am back on the clock and I'm going to go a different direction than some of these previous drafts. Patrick Mahomes is off the board, but I'm going quarterback. I'm taking Josh Allen in the second round here to Ooh, go with Tyreek okay. Hill. Part of that decision-making is that the running backs on the board are in a kind of muddy group where Brees Hall, the injury in the Dalvin Cook situation. Uh, I do like Ramondre, but I don't like taking him here. Uh, Najee, I'm not all in on. Etienne, okay. Not super excited about Walker. Gibbs I like, but not at the 208. So I'm going to take the shot on the quarterback and go with Josh Allen here in the second round Interesting. to go with Tyreek Hill. The Borgogan on the clock. I'm going to go super low T and go with Mike's dynasty team and go with Garrett Wilson here. Oh, you bum. So Jamar Chase, oh, man. Garrett Wilson. The combination to start the draft for the Borgogan. Jalen Hurts off the board at 210. Um, I figured uh, both quarterbacks would be leaving shortly after my pick. 
Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown goes next. And Mike, you are back. Finally, you get to pick again. Christian McCaffrey needs two teammates. He does. I had I had dreams of getting the the uh, both second year studs on this turn here. If you could start Christian McCaffrey, then go Wilson Olave. That would feel pretty pretty good. Uh, there's there's still man, there's still a lot of quality players here. Jalen Waddle has somehow he has made it back to me. I guess three quarterbacks will do that. T Higgins, who I have. I have ranked, I think, a little bit higher. Where do you guys have Higgins right about now? I've got Higgins pretty darn high. I've, I have him. I have him inside my top twelve. I do as well. Yeah, okay, All right. and he's the first of that three pack right now. In in my, you're rankings. talking about the, the the wide receiver two three pack. Yeah, yeah. Right now, T Higgins. I have him at seventeen. You guys have him have, okay. have him at twelve and eight. Uh, so little difference there. So the uh, it's a, when I when I look at the picks, boiling it down, it's I'm. I'm very bullish on Ramondre Stevenson. I we I said that in my in the last mock draft. Have him inside my top five, and then the three wide receivers. Did I would you say be, your top five? Yes, I have Ramondre up there on the season. Yes. How have we not talked about this? Did we you, have. Were you aware of this, yeah. Jason? Top I, five. I was aware of this. Yeah. I, I believe I mean, you. Sh you should listen to number the three, fan, the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Why wouldn't you say top three? I mean, I could have. I just was keeping it at top five, reminding people. Yeah, that Christian he was McCaffrey's there. in my top ten. No, nope. hey, that's 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 bold. Uh, yeah, so I, I have Ramondre at, at three. three. He is currently at three for me, and then I the wide receiver. Smell of my guy from a mile away. It's trending that, that direction. direction. But I had wow. I, I I couldn't put him on the board yet because I got to wait for freaking Dalvin Cook <laughs> to not landmine that my situation. The, I believe uh, last I saw, Patriots were odds-on favorites for both Hopkins and Dalvin Cook. Yeah, the, it it seems like. Uh, the Hopkins is down to the Patriots and the, the Titans, and then the and Dalvin Cook is the Jets or the Patriots. We shall see. I Sorry, not, I, my mind was blown. I did not uh, know you had him at three. Yep. That is a and uh, he ended up where he ended up. That was at the end of the original statting of your players. That, was that at, wasn't a recent adjustment. No, that was that was after the end of the stats. Where have I been? Uh, I don't know. And then the wide receivers: Jalen Waddle, Higgins, Chris Olave. It's it's very difficult to choose between those three players. Uh, but I'm going to go – the wide receivers are going to thin out for me, so I'm just going to take Ramondre Stevenson there, keep a, keep my, my two first picks, high testosterone, but then who do you pick between those three guys? We'll find out in a moment, Mike. Oh, no! <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> yeah, well uh – after the break, we've got two rounds done. So while Mike thinks about it, I'm going to recap the teams for all six of us. Mike with McCaffrey and Stevenson. So you got the double running backs. Kyle has Jamar Chase and Garrett Wilson. Two wideouts. I went Tyreek Hill and Josh Allen. And then producer Borland and Jason both have double running backs. Austin Eckler and Henry for Al. And then Jason has Bijan and Josh Jacobs. And Brooks went with Nick Chubb and A.J. Brown. All right, Mike. All now right. you're out of time. I have I have made the decision, and these guys are all so tight in the rankings. My rankings do have it going Higgins, Waddle, Olave, but with him being my wide receiver one, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for the stars. And of the those three pack, you know, only Chris Olave has the chance to be the number one on his team. And you know, if, if things go right for Olave, he could he can be to me like that top ten top eight uh, overall finish at the wide receiver position. So I'm going to go with Christopher Olave. So McCaffrey, Stevenson, Olave, after Chris Olave, Brees Hall finally off the board at 302. Mark Andrews oh, off the board at 303. Dear. Oh, no. you were not even oh, close. Oh, you were not even going to get – there was no way you're getting him. I get him. no way he's getting I through get him Owl. at the end uh, – that was that. I knew I knew Al would take him away from me, but I get him at the end of the third all the time lately. With uh, drafts with us and real people? Well, with real people, yeah. But in you're talking best ball. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think you're going to be able to uh, to survive that against us. Uh, if Kyle didn't take him, I would have taken him. If I didn't take him, Borland would have taken him. Okay. The Borg Gogan, Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, time for a running back. He went Najee Harris uh, at 304, putting me back on the clock. Uh, you know, this is, this is where – it's funny, like Jalen Waddle didn't get drafted ahead of Chris Olave, didn't get drafted ahead of Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson. Th these are all players that he finished uh, 
well ahead of last year. Um, but I have Tyreek Hill. Yeah, take him. Complete so I don't. I don't Hill, have. Man. I don't think I have that super dolphin that ability stack. to do it. And then obviously uh, Mark Andrews would have been an option. Oh, for you me. already took a quarterback. I was like, if you take those two wide receivers and just wait forever and take Tua. I don't know, man. Like you're, you're I would gonna, be you're drafting gonna, the Dolphins. You're going to be volatile, but when that would be terrifying to look at. I'm going to take the uh, the starting running back for a division winning team, Travis Etienne here. Um, Tyree Kill, Josh Allen, Travis Etienne, the first three rounds. Let's go, Jason or Jalen Waddle falling to me. <laughs> yeah, I, you've, I'm thrilled to sorry, see that. Sorry, Al Borland breaking in. <laughs> uh, Wait your turn, sir. Uh, it was, and it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, Austin Eckler, Derek Henry, Jalen Waddle for producer Borland. T. Higgins went in between ETN and Jalen Waddle. Jason would have snatched up Jalen Waddle, I'm sure. For at, sure. At 3.08, which is why I've enjoyed having you guys back to back. Jason, what yes. are you thinking about? Let's take a moment. Yeah, well. Because Bijan and Josh Jacobs are on your roster, and there are there are running backs that I think are interesting here. There, but, there are, but you, you, you know, you can go five RB like I did last night. <laughs> it's it's super tempting. Uh, there are far more interesting wide receivers here than running backs to me. I mean, right now, if you look at ADP, Kenneth Walker, Jameer Gibbs, Aaron Jones, those are fine running backs, but they don't excite me the way that a Devontae Smith or a DK Metcalf do. And and those are the two players that I'm looking between in the third round. I am absolutely open to the three-pack of the top-tier quarterbacks if they fall to the third. I'm also open to Mark Andrews. Those four players, I am willing from to. From onesies? From, from the onesie positions. If I'm in the middle of the third, the back of the third, I'm always checking. Are those four players there? If not, I'm running back or wide receiver. Considering I started running back, running back, and I feel good there, I'm going to take my highest-ranked wide receiver. He is only one spot higher than DK Metcalf, but I do believe Devonta Smith is – a world-beating wide receiver. Obviously, uh, I just talked up um, T. Higgins. D. Well, wait, was T. Higgins still on the board? Well, you no. talked up T. Higgins because no, you T. said Higgins he was, was the fun. highest of your triple. Sorry. Yes, but he was not available. I, I'm saying uh, on last episode, I talked up D. K. Metcalf, the positive touchdown regression that I do think will come for him. Uh, he moved up pretty significantly in my rankings, but I'm going to stick with them and go go with Smith. All right, Brooks, back on the clock. Kenneth Walker went right after Devontae Smith. Was that a disappointment to you, Brooks? Would you have taken Kenneth Walker here? I don't think so. Nick Chubb, A.J. Brown on the roster. All right, uh, it's risky, <laughs> but going to throw Mixon in here in the, in the third okay. round. Okay. No, I think that the that's, upside is there. that's worth it. And then Amari Cooper, Debo, and uh, round out the third round. Aaron Jones goes at the top of the fourth. That was a player I was – like sometimes you see names on the ADP board that you say maybe everyone's going to ignore I a little while. I dreamed a dream. I did dream a dream. Gone by. Uh, but AJ, uh, Aaron Jones gone. Joe Burrow at 402. We talked about his ADP on the Thursday show being 311 right now. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's pretty rich. There. So 402 is more reasonable of yeah. a selection. Brooks, back on the clock. I wasn't planning on this, but <laughs> we're going to add. Brooks's picks are my favorite. <laughs> Lamar Jackson in the fourth oh, round. You turned. Oh, he wasn't getting past me. That was my plan. I had two players I wanted. Thankfully, one of them still came back to me. It should be pretty obvious. It's DK Metcalf. I was between DK Metcalf and Devonta Smith, but I wanted either Metcalf or Lamar wow. Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson in the third round or in the I'm sorry the fourth round when you could take Lamar Jackson in the fourth he's the only guy that I see that can be in that tier of the Hurts Allen Mahomes and they're going in the second right now so I, I like the value there Lamar Jackson J uh, Jameer Gibbs went and then Jason went with DK Metcalf producer Borland didn't break into the show so I don't know how excited he could be with this pick but he needs to add to Eckler Henry and Waddle yeah, nothing real exciting here, but I am going to take Keenan Allen and make sure he stays away from Kyle's team. Yeah, I mean, that's always advisable um, unless oh, man. his dependency on Keenan Allen is his very undoing, which has been the case in recent years. Justin Fields at 407. That was the bigger reason I was upset about Lamar because you knew that going is, is I knew that Fields would not make it to me then. So uh, right now, how many of us have a quarterback? Just two of us? 
Brooks and myself in terms of the six of us of drafting. The live drafters. Six total quarterbacks taken, but two of us. Okay. Justin Fields off the board at 407. As someone with a quarterback, very happy to see three go in the fourth round. Uh, coming back to the to my roster, Tyreek Hill, Josh Allen, Travis Etienne. I am I'm looking at the running back room, uh, and it's it's between a few names: J.K. Dobbins on that Baltimore offense that Jason thinks I hate, uh, Miles Sanders. Oh, that's just what your words were. <laughs> Uh, no, that was not my words. Your words were, don't draft the Baltimore Raven. They suck. They're going to be the worst team in the division. Uh, I, that's just how I remember it. That's like a like a paraphrase. I we think. can check the tape, but I mean, it was something pretty close something to that. Something like that. Right. Um, Miles Sanders is in strong consideration there, too. And I think when you look at those two players, a bet on Dobbins is a bet on the offense and the team and then being uh, a, a huge success there in Baltimore. Talked about their win total yesterday at nine and a half. Tough division. Doesn't catch passes. So I'm actually going to go with the probably less popular for the listening audience pick, but the player that I think will be more fantasy productive in Miles Sanders. I, I'm a big fan of what his opportunity is. Sure. I'm, I've been very optimistic about the reports on Bryce Young of late. I don't know if you guys have been following that. But um, his progression is significant in, in the opportunities he's had to practice. Uh, I think that this team is going to surprise. It's the opposite of the division that J.K. Dobbins and the Ravens plays in, play in. So uh, I think it's a wide open division with Carolina, New Orleans, Atlanta, and Tampa. Uh, so I think Miles Sanders and the and the Panthers may surprise, and that's where I'm going to go there, getting my two running backs back to back. The Borgogan back on the clock. By the way, was the Miles yep. Sanders pick a surprise? I don't think it was a huge surprise to me. I, I see a pathway for Miles Sanders to easily be, you know, a top fifteen running back, and and if touchdowns come his way, that's the real question because I think the passing volume and the and the volume on the ground will be there for him. He should absolutely be a top, you know, twenty running back for sure. If touchdowns happen and the offense is better, then he could be a top eight running back. Kyle, you were about to say something. You went with J.K. Dobbins. J.K. 2L. Yeah, Sanders and Dobbins. Those are the last two kind of in our tiers. So I was going to take whoever was left over. Are you uh, happy I didn't take Dobbins or indifferent? I mean, I love the Ravens this year. Todd Monken for life. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the Todd Monken thing is um, it's such an interesting deep dive, really, because his teams in Tampa where he was responsible for play calling were – not winning teams, mm -hmm. but he passed it. Don't a, care. He passed it a lot. <laughs> and then, I mean, you guys got to remember that the last time he was in the NFL, he was with the most hyped and most disappointing team that we've had in probably five or six years, which was everybody was on board, the Cleveland Browns and, and Baker and Landry and Beckham and that high-flying offense in 2019. And that was where Todd Monken was the offensive coordinator, okay. mind you. Freddie Kitchens was yes. calling plays, yeah, it, but it, his influence was on that roster, and they were, again, a losing team. He's not been on a lot of winning teams. He's just been a an offensive influence that, that drives the passing game forward yeah, in terms I, of total volume. I did not pick them to win the division because of Todd Monk, and I picked them to win my fantasy heart. Yeah, I mean. I think they're going to have a lot more turnovers this year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because obviously, I, I don't know how much you want to hold him responsible for Cleveland, but that was the your bold prediction show was the demise of the most hyped fantasy Browns that year, which is what happened. I mean, these were all players, high draft capital players in Cleveland. They were disasters, um, but it's going to be, it's going to be a fun ride. I do not hate the Ravens. Mm. I believe that the Ravens are going to be uh, in the thick of it in that division. John Harbaugh is a great coach. Lamar Jackson is a great quarterback. I simply am the only person willing to say that it's not a guarantee that right. they're going to dominate. Yeah, Al, we're going to need you to cut that clip out and take the word not out. <laughs> I really want that sound yeah, bite yeah. and put it on my board so I can have Andy say, I do hate the Ravens mm -hmm. whenever I want. Mm -hmm. Well, Kyle uh, Kyle and Betts, uh, I think mostly on the basis of the amount of bets that they've placed so far, <laughs> were very oppositional to my thoughts on Baltimore. Uh, after Dobbins went DeAndre Hopkins – who's just kind of sitting in the ether right now as a, a nothing, but deserves like 
Like his pace last yeah. year was 1,400 yard pace. So if he lands in the right spot, this is, is a there, relevant player. Is there a right spot though? Yeah, it, uh, there there is definitely a right spot. That would be the dark horse uh, candidate that I would not rule out yet. The Kansas City Chiefs. I think that 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 they are still in play. And if he were to go there with kind of a wide open depth chart, his talent, Mahomes, I I think he would absolutely be a, a fantasy dominator i don't think he's I, I think tennessee's an option for him too i mean this was the, an offense where if he's i mean he would usurp Traylon burks instantaneously yes in the I, primary I target that. and that offense runs it's predicated on that like first read uh play action pass like we saw aj brown dominate there like i don't think that's out of out well, of question well, even with the patriots you you might not yeah. believe in mac jones but he would be the one there so yeah. I, like right, Kobe myers was relevant I right mean, now i took him uh in in an underdog draft where he was the wide receiver relevance is not a fourth round pick yeah he was the wide receiver 24 taken i don't, I don't know where he is on this mike one. let me qualify <laughs> um i don't know which wide receiver number he is right now but i mean it i can't see him finishing the season lower than a wide receiver 24 TJ Hawkinson, Mike, unfortunately went off the board right ahead of oh, you. Oh, drats. You have two picks again. McCaffrey, Stevenson, and Olave. And this is where, like, when you're drafting on the edge, you, I mean, you know, the, I mean, the turn, <laughs> not living on the edge. I guess I'll be living on the edge a little bit with this. You have to um, make some leaps here because you've got to wait, yes. what, 22 picks before you Ex get the pick again? Exactly. And to me, the, the, the top ADP, at least, guys, we're we're in a we're in a much larger bucket, and I want to take a shot here on a difference making duo. It's just what order and eh, whatever. I'm going to respect the order here. So I'm I'm going to take Justin Herbert, and then a wide receiver who we we aren't talking about him a lot because he's so hot and cold, and yet he still is in. He's my wide receiver 16. He's in my top 20 right now. I'm going to take the stack. I'm going to take Michael Williams. I was I had a little bit of dreams that Keenan Allen would fall for that stack, but Justin Herbert and Mike Williams, I'll take it. Interesting. Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, and then Drake London and Calvin Ridley go off the board, so a run of three wide receivers before the Borgogan can draft his next Raven. Who are you thinking about? I'm going to take Jason's favorite player. Oh, Terry, Terry McLaurin. McLaurin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Terry McLaurin. <laughs> So that means that means Kyle's team is Jamar oh, Chase, man. Garrett Wilson, Terry McLaurin. I certainly like McLaurin when he fits in as a wide receiver three yes. on a roster. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, I I had the dream of him getting to me and having the Devonta Smith, DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin uh, combination. So I'm back on the clock. Tyreek Hill, Josh Allen, Travis Etienne, Miles Sanders. Uh, four wide receivers off the board at the top of this round. There are names that I'm interested in at wide receiver. I just, it's tough because I have a long wait after this pick. I like Brandon Ayuk. I like Hollywood. I shouldn't say more names out loud like that. You hate, but you must. But um, I, I think I like the potential of a couple of running backs a little bit more. So I'm going to actually go, I guess, mid-round high T. I'm going to take Cam Akers no! here in the fifth round. And put ETN Sanders and Akers on the team. I always want depth he at running back. He was supposed to get to me. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I don't think you are. If I'm being honest, I don't believe that you are. Sorry. Yeah, well, well, he really just said words. I think he that did. was a hollow apology. There was no. Well, you know, there was no emotion or feeling yeah. in that. If you're really sorry, you'll trade him to me straight up. <laughs> yeah. Well, for <laughs> my for, pick, just straight for, up um, yeah, for nothing. You just trade him to me. All right. Uh, I went with Cam Akers. So three running backs in a row. We've got Christian Watson at 5.06, and then the Borgogan is not on the clock. It's producer Borland. It is, and I was considering Christian Watson there. Of course you were. It Pack was finally time for your pack. It was. I was trying to get one on, on my team, but I couldn't do that, I, so I am going to take Marquise Hollywood-Brown. So three wideouts in a row for the uh, Al, and uh, Jason's back on the clock. Yeah, this is a little bit unfortunate. Um, is this I, your first year? You're, you're squirming for the first time because you've, um, this you've is got the a first nice time start. I'm squirming. Yeah, no, I, honestly, I haven't really liked the uh, the seven eight spot in drafts, but Owl's team and my own the first four rounds I feel like fell really nicely for us. What I find funny about your team, which is great, Robinson, Jacobs, Devonte Smith, and Metcalf, is that I would reverse both of your positions. Like I'd rather draft Jacobs over. Bijan, 
and I'd rather draft Metcalf over Devontae Smith, and yet you got them both <laughs> with the reverse order. Well, when you are at the 108 or 109, the order in which you pick guys really does matter. Sometimes you want to play the ADP game a little bit more, knowing like, well, I, I might like that player better, but he's lower in the default system ranking, so I'm going to take the guy that's you know higher ADP-wise and hopefully get both players. It's happened a couple times. I'm looking at two players that I want, and I'm going to play that game right now. I'm going to take the one that has the higher ADP because hopefully I get the other player, uh, which I will not name because Brooks. I, I was hoping to Brooks bait, bait you into that. Um, but I'm going to Brooks, take... cover your ears and then tell us, Jason. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to actually, since I didn't get one of the quarterbacks that I like, to me it's the top three and then Lamar Jackson and then Justin Herbert. I want one of them. I didn't get one, so I'm I'm punting. Fields is not in that group for you he's not for where he's drafted he absolutely I would like fields in general but you know as far as the value I think the value of Herbert usually in the fifth Lamar in the fourth um I, I like those guys I'm going to take the gamble that I've taken a couple times this offseason I'm grabbing Kyle Pitts at tight end I'm gonna still go onesie but I'm looking for a difference maker spicy spicy pick Kyle Pitts and George Kittle back to back so at least in that sense, you're at the front of the fifth round tight end selections. Brooks, uh, were you thinking about either of those guys? Would you? I know you're a George Kittle fan. I am a fan, but with uh, already taking Lamar Jackson, I didn't want to grab a tight end this early. And the player I was hoping fell fell to me. I'm taking a chance on Mike's guy, Alexander Madison. Uh, here in the ooh, fifth. Very nice. Chubb, Mix, and Madison, your three running backs. You're going to enjoy that. A.J. Brown's Lamar, Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Um, after Madison was Pierce, Trevor Lawrence, DJ Moore, and Tyler Lockett. Lawrence was somebody that I would have had my eyes on. Jason, like, he'll tell you who's going to punt the position, but then if Lawrence fell back to him in the six, he'd be it's possible. He'd be back in. But uh, Lockett's off the board. I don't know if that the groans from from you two, but I I enjoyed that Jason had Metcalf, so he couldn't take Lockett. You or know, it probably felt like you could. No, it it did feel like that. Um, actually, the two players I <laughs> wanted was Pitts and Lockett, and then after I took Pitts, I remembered I had Metcalf. I was like, well, I should find another player to drop. Oh, here. Lockett was the, Lockett okay. was the guy, but happy he's taken. All right, Brooks, one more pick. All right, guys, with just AJ Brown at wide out so far, I definitely think I need to go wide out here. There's a few guys I like, but there's one that's standing out. I'm going back, guys. Oh. Wait, where are you going? Back? You're going to the city? We're building oh, the city. Oh, there's the oh, Brooks one. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Wait a minute. When was that made? How when was in the that world visual you drop have... made? This morning. Oh, you made but it this morning, you... but you didn't know you were going to draft him? I maybe did a couple mocks and had an idea. Oh, he was wow. prepped. We built this city. Honestly, that is. And there's pizzas flying around? Oh, yeah. On YouTube, that was what? outstanding. I am so impressed. What is happening? Because I feel like that says everything about why mock drafting matters. Because he ran mocks this morning, knowing we were he going to- He ran the calculations. He knew we were going to do this draft, and he knew that Michael Pittman might be sitting there enough to build an animation. And it came hey, wait, true. Wait, 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 wait. How many animations do you have right now? He's like, well, I built 27 possibilities. For different players. Wow, so Michael Pittman- as a wide receiver, too. How does that? You're, you're nodding. You feel, I mean, you built the city. Yeah, I feel good enough about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a great player. Well, Jason's back on the clock uh, after Pittman went Jerry Judy. So we've got, you know, a lot of wideouts have gone in the fifth and sixth round. We're up to 10 in that stretch. Jason just went with a onesie in Kyle Pitts. Two running backs, two wide receivers. Yeah. Um, considering that I've got Bijan and Josh Jacobs, I feel more confident there. I would prefer to go wide receiver. However, when I look at the players available and the tiers that are left, there are several wide receivers that I see as really good quality wide receivers that are all in about the same tier that might make it back to me. Now, this is my long term. I'm not going to assume any of them do, but I will play the, the gamble and the risk because at running back, there's one running back that I see as significantly better um, health will be an issue. I don't think the fact that the team is putrid will be. He was unbelievable down the stretch last year for a putrid Arizona Cardinals, and that's James Conner. Uh, he's going to be the guy. You look at the depth chart, there's just no one else there. He catches passes. He gets the goal line work. 
he'll volume his way when he's on the field to being very fantasy relevant. I, I think he would have been a perfectly fine pick where I took Cam Akers. Yes. So for you to get him almost a, a full round later, I think is a is a value. You have such guaranteed production at wide receiver that it, I don't think you felt like you had to go there. So James Conner, you know, like what you said, you know, we've had a few mocks where we're drafting from seven or eight. And it feels like constant sniping, constantly not in the position you want to be. Right now, the seven and eight look pretty pretty nice. And producer Borland, certainly capable of screwing that up at this point. You're on the yeah. clock. Yeah, and I'm I'm a little tilted because I was going James <laughs> Conner there. And oh, back to back <laughs> Hollywood and Conner on that uh, Cardinal offense. All the Arizona. Yeah, but I am going to take Dallas Goddard. <laughs> All right, Dallas Goddard, the first Smooth. potential tilt pick of the draft. <laughs> I love Dallas Goddard. I think he has yeah, tremendous potential. Um, I'm also really excited about what has occurred because I was strongly considering a player that I think I view in the lens that, you know, Mike has uh, high expectations for Ramondre Stevenson and Chris Olave this year. Uh, we certainly agree on Olave, but I almost took Brandon Ayuk with my last pick in the fifth round. Um, I believe he will be the wide receiver one for the NFL's top two, three team uh, in the 49ers. And so I get the opportunity to have waited, get Cam Akers, and come back with Brandon Ayuk at 6.08, which now, I feel very good about. Was the two and the three, What did you throw them both out? Because if Trey Lance is the quarterback, they're at two, and then if Purdy's there, they're three? I don't think that was my thinking. I okay, mean, I'm just to trying like to read between the lines. psychiatrist in here and try to figure that out, but – Historically speaking, I have not considered Trey Lance very much. Mm. So neither um, of the 49ers. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So I went with Ayuk to go with Tyreek Hill, Allen, Etienne, Sanders, and Akers, and then the Borg Gogan snuck in with his pick, which uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something up with the selection he made. He went with David Montgomery at 609. So this is an opportunity for me to tell you about. Um, Essentially, a trade that I got today in Dynasty. Oh, I you received but have not accepted or rejected? I did reject. Oh, okay. so I'm sorry to break that suspense. Wait, no, 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 I haven't done it. Okay, let me, let's hear it. But I was offered Ayuk and David Montgomery for Josh Jacobs in Dynasty, mm. which no, I knowing you, I'm yeah. surprised you didn't take it. I declined that trade. Interesting, uh, because I have Josh Jacobs locked in as that top three guy, but I could live to regret it if there's problems with the holdout or. Uh, Brandon Ayuk has the year that I'm hoping for. I did turn it down. But Montgomery goes at 6.09. And then uh, ironic run of running backs. Those three guys together have been very involved. David Montgomery, then DeAndre Swift, then Jamal Williams. All these guys that are kind of taking each other's uh, jobs. Uh, that would be Javante. Oh, that was Javante Williams. That was yeah. Javante Williams. So um, Never mind. <laughs> it was Jay Williams. Jamal, you, were, you had, Jamal you had Lions on your mind because Montgomery, you know, a lion. And Swift. Formally, was formally, yeah, and uh, Jamal was, but this was Javante. Javante at six eleven. I'm terrified to draft him in any draft, but Mike, uh, you're back on the clock. Two picks. I am have and the Herbert Williams stack. I'm my team is very balanced. Two running backs, two wide receivers, and I took the quarterback. I am feeling the sting of the quarterback right now because there's not players that uh, there's not not players that I love. Um, but I'm going to take. I mean, he's just I, – I think he's still good. Maybe he is declining, and in, and his quarterback play is not going to be the best. Uh, but Chris Godwin is one of a few wide receivers left who should see, I don't know, it, you know, a good 23 to 25% minimum of the target share for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then for the next pick, the, the players who I'm looking at, the bounce back season for Deontay Johnson, calling the shot on the breakout – for Traylon Burks. Um, Jahan Dotson is also in consideration for me. And I'm looking at the running backs. Maybe I should not have picked so quickly because the, the top running back I'd be interested in would have been Rashad White. I don't really want to go back-to-back -back Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, so maybe I don't like the Chris Godwin pick as much. Cause, Interesting. Because that has removed Rashad White from... You would take Rashad to, White over Antonio to... Gibson? I would, yes. Hmm. Yeah, I mean the some Rashad White discussions and buzz going on right now. And 
Yeah, it's not, I Jason don't, doesn't buy it. I don't. Um, I don't overly love Rashad White, but maybe you just maybe the team was just so bad you throw it in the garbage because Leonard Fournette was terrible. Like offensive they, line was the beat offensive up, very line beat was up. was very very beat up. Do we just give them a pass on that and then Rashad White ends up being a great pick this year? Uh, but I'll I'll speed it up here. I will take. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the volume, <laughs> the sure volume of Deontay Johnson. All right, then uh, Dak went next. Rashad White went at number three. Jason pounded the table. I think that was a Deontay pounding yeah, the table. Yeah, he had the dreams of Deontay. And then uh, Kyle, you are on the clock just to run your team back. Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, McLaurin at wide receiver. You went Najee, J.K. Dobbins, and then Montgomery in the last round. Uh, there are there are some pretty big names out there right now. Who are you going with? I'm gonna go with Mike Evans. He's kind of the last wide receiver one that I view here as like he's locked in for his team. Yeah, that's uh, that would have been my selection. So uh, I'd said nice things about your team, thinking that would like maybe maybe he'd screw it up. Maybe it'd screw he'd screw yeah. the pickup. Uh, I'm back on the clock. It's between two players for me. It's Darren Waller, tight end for the New York Giants, who I think is going. I am very much rising on his potential this year. And the other option would be a guy I really love in Jahan Dotson, but I'm not going to kind of – I don't think I'm going to force the issue here with Jahan Dotson. I'm going to take Darren Waller for the first time this offseason. All right. Christian, no no, re, no reaction no, to Darren Waller sorry, whatsoever. We'll just six uh, people here. I'm going to just keep talking. I was I was mid-swallow. I could not react. I think it's, I think it's a, a, strong, a strong – Yeah, there we go. It's another option. I'm I'm with you that he should be. It's I think you, it carries a lot of risk going here in the seventh with you know the other players you could have picked, but the he could certainly regain form and be a top five guy. Producer Borland, I am looking at quarterback and not really not sold on anybody there. So I'm going to move on and I'm going to take Antonio Gibson. Could have uh, built the stack with Jalen Waddle, gone to a in the seventh round. Antonio Gibson, uh, we'll see what it's like but in, in look, Washington. Looking at the draft board, Jason ha does not have a quarterback, but then nine through 12, they do. So not likely that Tua gets taken between his next pick. Yeah, that well. That was definitely something that I was looking at. Yep. When I look at the quarterback position, Tua is the last guy that I really like. I would be happy to leave the draft with Tua – um, I'm out Should on be happy to leave it with Watson. I'm but. out on Voldemort. I get that. Like if you want to be in on Deshaun Watson, he could have an unbelievable season. Could be an uh, easily could be a better pick than Tua. I just, that's just not how, I mean, Deshaun Watson's a projection and I project it going poorly. So, um, Tua is the player I want. I am going to play the ADP game and assume that oh. in the seventh round, I was wrong, Jeremy. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, and, and assume that in the seventh round, a team is not going to double up on quarterback that early. So I'm going to look at wide receiver. I've only got uh, Devonta Smith and DK Metcalf on my team. I, I played that gamble last time and took James Conner. It worked out well because I had about four wide receivers I wanted. Deontay Johnson was the only one that went. Jordan Addison, Traylon Burks, and Jahan Dotson still available. I'm going to go by my rankings, and I'm going to take Traylon Burks, who I think is going to have a phenomenal season so long as DeAndre Hopkins doesn't show up. His offseason camp reports have been great, showed up in shape is playing faster, and I think he's super talented. Pickens off the board. Brooks, you are uh, back on the clock. I don't know if you have graphics prepared for this pick, but who are you taking? No, I don't, but uh, very happy that Dotson fell to this spot. That's my pick. All right, Jahan Dotson, stealing him from me. I had, I had graphics prepared. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Alvin Kamara, James Cook off the board at 712. That could be a steal. Brandon Cook, so the Cook and the Cooks both going to Team 12. Isaiah Pacheco. Off the board at eight oh two, and then cooks Brooks in the is kitchen. back on. You get on. to do the team name. Yeah, that's true. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. that's worth it. I mean, and if you get Dalvin in there, phew. wow, that would be too many cooks in the kitchen, though. <laughs> All this, right, uh, Brooksy. This one's definitely a reach, but Kyle knows I love this guy, and if he hits, I'm gonna be upset if he's on a different roster. I'm drafting Khalil Herbert here. Yeah, mm. he was he was at the top of my queue. That is definitely That's a on brand. Brooks. That is a Brooks pick. I mean, there yeah, are because Brooks knows running backs. I, I will say this: when Madison, when, what is going on here with Khalil Madison, Herbert? Madison Pittman Herbert. Uh, when Khalil Herbert's name comes up, I just associate him with Brooks. 
that's that's my viewpoint. So here I am. Tua did get back to me. Uh, the fact that Jordan Addison was drafted right before me by Team 9 makes this easy because had Addison gotten back, I might have punted quarterback further, gone with a lower-tier guy and for the, for the chance at the breakout because I do think Addison is super talented and his situation is delightful. But I will take Tua. So now I've got my quarterback and tight end out of the way. I've got three running backs and three wide receivers. I'm loving my roster. All right. Uh, after... Tua, we have a disappointed Al Borland. Yeah, I played the ADP game. I lost, uh, but it did give me a chance to get a Packer on my roster. Chilling, <laughs> oh, team six. Uh, so, A.J. Dillon to Al Borland. Finally has his Packer. Evan Ingram off the board at 8.07. I am back on the clock. I'd like to uh, improve the depth of my wide receiver room. Power at the top in Tyreek breakout candidate and Brandon Ayuk, but I am looking to find uh, hopefully a little bit of maybe, maybe a combination of consistency and upside with this selection. Kadarius Tony on the board, Quentin Johnson on the board, but I'm going to go with uh, the rule of talent emerges and I'm going to go Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, first yeah, wide receiver off the board in Seattle. Yeah. I, 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 I have no problem with like, I love the pick of, of taking Smith and Jigba. I just don't like when it's in front of Tyler Lockett. Yeah, Lockett went two rounds, yeah. ahead, two and a half rounds ahead. Uh, Kyle just took Mike Evans back on the clock. I played the ADP game, and I waited, and I went for Deshaun Watson here. All right. Okay. Yeah, I love I love that pick. And when you look at the, the entire league minus one team has a quarterback, and you can get a guy that I think has uh, certainly top five, six potential – with the last of those picks, uh, tremendous upside. Uh, Kadarius Tony went next. Gabe Davis and Mike back-to-back -back selections here. You had been reacting to Evan Ingram off the board, which might have been one of your picks. It would have been, yeah. But uh, you can't pick somebody else's player. Yeah, I, I cannot do that. So tight end is now. I mean, Friermuth is interesting. You would have taken point. Evan Ingram ahead of Friermuth. I would have, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's super dumb. <laughs> wow that's that's uh one counterpoint okay yep. uh, all right um did you see the explosive games from evan Ingram last year i saw both of them yeah <laughs> they, they were they were two good weeks okay that's that's his career two good weeks is the name of his documentary that's fine i know you're an ingram man though. yes yeah I, through and through um uh, i'm i'm gonna stack up some running backs here uh, it comes down to because I mean I've only I only have two of them on my roster headed into the eighth round, um, so the the ones I'm looking but at, they're two of your top twenty four running backs. They are two of my top fifty, top forty, yeah. top three, top yeah. So it is Zach Charbonnet is in my short list here, um, and Rashad Penny again. I just can't stop drafting him, and then Samaj P Ryan at this point. Mm. <laughs> oh gosh, no! P. Ryan is, P. Ryan. Uh, Samaj, Don't pick those guys. Samaj P. Ryan is is at the top because I only have the two running backs, and I'm projecting that that Javante will miss at least a month, and so that gives me uh, again what one of our no, he'll be back <laughs> and he'll be fine. Just one, let him drop. One of my favorite tips for how do you play fantasy football is. Like break the season down. Look at like I'm going to take care of my first four weeks, and if I get a running back for who gets to play for Sean Payton, that I can get four weeks out to help me try and figure things out from there on. I'll find someone off the waiver wire by then, so Samaj P Ryan can help me cover because I only have the two running backs, so he is in. And then it's do I take who has Charbonnet? I mean, Charbonnet has to deal with Kenneth Walker. Rashad Penny has to deal with the fact that he is Rashad Penny. <laughs> and, and he has to deal with oh, can, like Swift on the team. We, it's, I am my own worst enemy. <laughs> yes, he he really is. Um, I I don't have Charbonnet. I haven't drafted him a single time. So let's do it. Dang, he took, he took both the targets. <laughs> man. <laughs> both the targets. So that's funny because my cue. Those were my top yeah, two that, targets. So it. all three of us were between Pirine and Charbonnet as the two players we wanted the most. Mike was on the clock twice, yeah. so he got both of them. Yeah, baby. Quentin Johnston, Michael Thomas go next. The Borgogan. You just had Deshaun Watson. Who's your next pick? You do need I a tight one of those end running backs. The, yeah, go ahead. I wanted one of the running backs, but I know that Friar Muth will not make it back to me if I don't take him here, so I'm going to select him here. 
All right, so quarterback, tight end, back-to-back there, and uh, your team, you have freedom with the last two picks of the draft. I am back on the clock, and, uh, you know, I took Darren Waller and Jackson Smith and Jigba with the last two picks. Uh, I think that there are some interesting names out there, but I'm going to go with a player maybe 50% because I like the value and 50% because I want to potentially make Jason Matt. You're getting you're getting TJ Maxed right now. I don't think there's a pl- there there might be one player that could make me mad. Oh what? <laughs> you took a chain? <laughs> I I mean that that wasn't even in the that wasn't even in the realm of possibility. Yeah. Because you know where I like a chain? I like him after Etn Sanders and Acres when he's the fourth running back on a roster. With I the, didn't know you were so the interested uh, in he, your ninth round pick. So he was at the top of my queue. Of but course he, he was. But he wasn't the player that I was talking about because I just I've never seen you draft him. This yeah. Is, well, this that was you know. Again, yeah, his explosive ability, that offense, I think it, I think it could really, really work. I have two on my roster. I would love to get a sixty-yard screen pass from him to the house. So, uh, great pick. Andy. Do you want to announce the pick that happened after Devon A. Chain correctly? This yes, time? Javante Williams. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, Jamal Williams yeah. has finally been drafted by Team Six. Producer Borland, you are on the clock. I am, and I'm going to fill my vacant quarterback slot with a guy throwing the ball to Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins, probably the uh, – did you see this documentary that just came out? The quarterback documentary Is on Is that ne- where they follow the three guys with uh, – and I think Mariota's Mahomes. in it's there? It's Mariota, Mahomes, and, and Cousins. Mm-hmm. That they, but look, we watched One the of trail. those things is not <laughs> like the other. What is Mariota doing in that? He was a starting quarterback last yeah. year. Yeah. They want they – and, he, and he's a top two pick. They wanted to see, can this guy rebuild this team and rebuild his career – and we got to see it was it, it looks really interesting. I haven't seen it yet, yeah. but I mean the trailer just seeing all the behind the scenes work that these guys do. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking forward to, it. but Kirk Cousins off the board. Um, I'm not sure you couldn't have gotten him a round or two later. Yeah, but this is the I get it. This I, is the make sure. Yeah, I see After teams the two double up on quarterbacks, and I didn't want to get stuck with Aaron Rodgers. Jason, you are on the clock. Oh, uh, Devon A. Chain's available. Oh, no, he's not. Mr. Packers. That's like, right. I would never draft Aaron Rodgers. The traitor. Too soon. Um, so the player that I thought you could draft that would upset me was Rashad Penny. Uh, I did want a running back. I don't think there was. Uh, there's a handful of running backs left out there that I – see a pathway towards having a great fantasy season. Rashad Penny, I do see a pathway for that. He's freaking awesome. I love it. I love the pick. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you, you <laughs> usually end up with Rashad Penny in these drafts, so I'll take him and uh, allow the draft to continue to Brooks. Brooks, you're on the clock. I need a tight end, and I'm glad that Chig is there. Grabbing Chig oh, a conquo. Man. And then David Njoku goes next. So both uh, very good upside names that would make the tight endless Mike disappointed. Brian yeah. Robinson goes at nine twelve, coming into the tenth round. Anthony Richardson uh, off the board, which probably a, would have been cousins. Probably would have been cousins. Uh, Cortland Sutton at ten oh two, probably the most ignored player in the history of fantasy this year. I, I haven't heard a whisper from about him. You know, Tim Patrick coming back and Jerry Judy. Cortland Sutton's still going to probably start. So yeah. I mean, if you believe that there's upside in a new head coach, there's. It's not impossible that he's contributing. Brooks, back on the clock. And here I'm going to take a late-round shot on Zay Flowers no, to go, to go with Lamar Jackson. Jerk! You're a jerk and a dummy dumb face. And uh, Over well, Bateman, huh? And then Brooks? Bateman went next. Just because of the injury stuff he's gotcha. dealing with. but I think that's fair. Oh, man, that really stinks. I, I'm looking for upside. You know, this is my wide receiver four. I'm looking for someone that can really – uh, propel themselves to a breakout and most of the wide receivers that are available you know there's Jacoby Myers and Alan Lazard and players that are look they're gonna I think Myers is a little underrated too I, I agree especially in that offense with Jimmy Garoppolo and and if I was um, really desperate for a starting wide receiver I think I think he's fine but I'm looking for someone as my wide receiver four that has more explosive uh, potential than Jacoby Myers has. I'm I'm looking for someone like a rookie that could do something special. I'm going to draft a guy uh, much further down in ADP that, but neither one of you two believe in. I do believe in. Certainly not to the level. Don't levels. tell me what I believe. <laughs> I will tell you what you've said you believe. Then um, I'm going to take Rushy Rice, 
rookie oh, wide receiver for I stand corrected. Yes, thank you. Uh, you for, do know what I believe. <laughs> for the Kansas City Chiefs, think he's a talented player. He's had a lot of buzz and I, I just want the chance to either cut a guy or see that he's special and You'll get that chance. Yeah. One yeah. of those two. Uh Al Borland. One more pick. Yeah, I think this is a bit of a reach. I'm not sure what his <laughs> ADP is, but I want him. So I'm gonna take Romeo Dobbs. Romeo oh. Dobbs off the board. No, it's a good pick. I would have taken him on the turn. It's impossible to reach at your second yeah, to last yeah. pick. That's Ten, not the, a reach. The tenth round, throw ADP out. Go get the guys you want. Scroll down, find your big explosive belief, and then draft them. Yeah, and I'm really thrilled for Jason taking Rasheed Rice because I get to take Sky Moore with the uh, with the ten oh eight, and then Elijah Moore, Dalton Kincaid, and Jamison Williams off the board. Mike, your final two picks. That is Jamal Williams. Jameson Williams. Did I say Jamal? No. no. Oh, okay. You just keep okay. this. It's a really good bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's because they're Jay Williams. The people were like, say it. And so I did. <laughs> Mike, close it out. You got to get a tight end. All right. So I am I am back to full balance. There's balance within the force. So I, I'm going to take a tight end. Um, and then I'm trying to figure out which uh, – which position do I want to take the shot on? Um, I guess look the the tie, I'll go with the tight end two for the Denver Broncos. So I'll take Greg Dulcich. Just take some some upside there. <laughs> and then the there man, it's tough here with the with the last pick. There's a there's a few names I I want to call out. Kendra Miller. I don't think we've mentioned him enough, but a third round selection by the New Orleans Saints, who which Kendra Miller, in my opinion could have been drafted higher had he not been dealing with uh, an injury in the draft process. But he's he got drafted by the Saints, and Alvin Kamara's situation, we don't know. And Al Alvin Kamara, the, the player, I mean, it looked like there was significant decline last year. Jamal Williams, they brought him in. But I think that by the end of the year, there is a path that Kendra Miller could end up being the, the running back that you actually want from that team. And... So I, just re I really wanted to highlight him. And then I'm going to take who I project to be the starting running back for the Miami Dolphins. I will take Jeff Wilson. All right, Aaron Rodgers and Geno Smith go after Jeff Wilson. Kyle, final pick. Kendra Miller yeah, off the mm. board. So, Kyle, you know, I talk, did I talk you into him? I had him cued way before. Okay. Yeah, he was going right. to be my pick Kyle, as well. Kendra, Kendra Miller is a, a really good late-round uh, sleeper. I'm going to go back-to-back -back Chiefs. Uh, two Two shots with my final two picks on the league's MVS? best the league's best offense. Jarrett McKinnon oh. is the pick. If McKinnon had gone off the board, my pick would have been Kyler Murray. I I have him. It would have queued. been a shot at some Wow. As a a gamble at a top five quarterback at that point and as a trade leverage pick with the last pick. Well that that that's what it would have to be for you. I, I would For you it would have been a possible starter. Exactly. You've got Josh Allen. I don't usually draft players to trade, but you know, Tua might not be good. And Kyler could be there week one. So he is in consideration for me. All right, Al Borland. Raheem Mostert, so we've seen uh all, all three, three of them all got three drafted. Of them got this drafted. Time. Jason, your final pick. Uh my final pick, I'm going to actually yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Kyler. Everything we just said to a Maybe he's great. Maybe he's not. Uh, Kyler could be ready week one. I, I'll take that yeah, pair that was, of quarterbacks. Yeah, that was my idea, not yours. Um, you didn't have that idea. That's mine. No, it was uh, Mike's. No, you, you can, Mike. Mike. You can good, do my good idea. job, Mike. What did I do? Um, Just say thank you. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. All right, Brooks. Final pick of our group here. Uh, Damian Harris went off the board at 1109. I like that. Worth a shot. Who's your final selection? I'll take Jalen Warren here. All right, Jalen Warren off the board, and that is going to do it. Woo! How do you feel about your teams? Give me um I'll read your team and then you give me a a couple of words. This will give you time to think, producers, on how you feel about it. The Borgogan has Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, oh. Terry McLaurin, Mike Evans, and Elijah Moore at wide receiver. Najee, Dobbins, Montgomery, and Kendra Miller at running back with Watson and Firemuth at the onesie positions. Kyle, how would you how would you rate your draft? I'd say balanced, and then I have those two young guns that I can win a week with. How would you grade your draft? Mm, good, good, good question. I'll put in the analyzer, but I'll say A minus. Okay, 
All right. Very self-assured. Um, How would you grade his draft? B plus. Hmm. Very good draft. Very good team. Um, I go C plus. Very possible. <laughs> <laughs> very possible. You could have running back question marks uh, if they don't deliver on promise. But I mean, you got a, a strong three to start with before you hit the waiver wire. Okay, that's your opinion. Um, <laughs> Dobbins is going to be great. Okay, that's your opinion. All right, we're going to producer Borland, who has Eckler, Henry, Gibson, Dylan, Mostert at running back, Waddle, Keenan, Hollywood, and Dobbs at wide receiver with Goddard and Cousins. How do you feel about your team, Al? I would say pleasantly surprised. Okay. I, I was not happy to draw the seventh spot, but I, I think drafting from there, I'm really happy with the team I got. And you would grade your team a B plus. B plus. You should talk to. You should send a uh, edible arrangement to Team Six over there. Going, I thought going it was with a Johnny Taylor. Super strong start. Yeah, very strong start. <laughs> so C, about a C plus. plus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Brooks, you have Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Alexander Madison, Khalil Herbert, and Jalen Warren at running back. AJ Brown, and then a little bit of a wait before you built the city with Michael Pittman, uh, stole Jahan Dotson. And added Zay Flowers at a value at uh, in the tenth round. Chica Conquo, gotta love it. And then Lamar Jackson in the fourth. How about you? How do you feel about your your squad? Yeah, I really dig that uh, with taking the quarterback pretty early. I usually don't do that. So, but I think Pittman and Dotson in the sixth and seventh saved my wide receiver two position. And I'm guessing about a B plus. Yeah, B okay. plus. Yeah, and Jason. Give it a C plus. All right. <laughs> All right, we are uh, down to our three teams. Mike has McCaffrey, Stevenson, and a long wait before grabbing P. Ryan, Charbonnet, and Wilson. Pretty good job grabbing some relevant running backs that late after you had those first two. Olave, Mike Williams, Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson at wide receiver with Herbert and Dulcich. You know, being at the turn, you had to kind of take Herbert and Williams maybe a little ahead of ADP. Didn't have a choice. You weren't going to get them. If you didn't, so how do you feel about your squad? I, I feel risky. I think that it, it it comes down to, is Justin Herbert, does he bounce back to being a top five type of a quarterback? If he doesn't, then I will be scrambling because, you know, Mike Williams would also suffer a little bit as well. Yeah, there's a world where Lawrence and Watson and Tua outperform Herbert if yeah. it doesn't go right. Yes, it's and possible. And then that's a overinvestment, but probably about a B plus on your – Yeah, I give, okay. I'll give myself about a B. Jason has Bijan and Jacobs to go with Connor and Rashad Penny, Devontae Smith, DK Metcalf, Traylon Burks, and Rashi Rice, and then Kyle Pitts, Tua, and Kyler. Any final thoughts? No, I I, uh, I think the the top is really secure and safe, and then the back end is very risky. Hoping to secure for, the top. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I view I, – I actually like Mike's team quite a bit. I like my team quite a bit, and I think we're similar in the sense that I, I think that the – you know, the first five or six players are, are really locked in solid, solid options. All right. Final team here. I have uh, Tyreek Hill, Brandon Ayuk, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Sky Moore at wide receiver. And then I have Etienne Sanders, Cam Akers, Devon A. Chain, and Jared McKinnon at running back. Josh Allen and Darren Waller as my onesies. I can feel the thinness of the wide receiver room that comes from spinning two top seven picks on Allen and Waller, but um, certainly have the star power on this roster. And hopefully, Miles Sanders or Akers, doesn't have to be both with this roster, can emerge as a big-time talent. I'm, I'm in the middle on this squad. I don't know if you guys have thoughts on it before we close out, but um, fairly happy. Went a different route with Allen in the second. Yeah, it's you always pay a price. So. You always feel it. You it's, always feel it. it. It comes down to is Josh Allen, like those three quarterbacks, will they be that much better than the rest of the pack of the quarterback? Historically, the trend says that they won't, but those are special players who certainly could. And it, they have, those specific names have for a couple of years. Yeah, it is, it is really hard to see them not repeating what they did last year. And I'm not saying that it's very easy to like historically – say it won't happen it's just difficult like emotionally like to think right. you just always presume whatever happened last year is going to happen again and that's something you got to be a little careful of yeah I mean last year I took the shot on Herbert in our league of record and it was a bad shot and it cost me the season in a lot of ways because he had a disappointing year despite throwing for that many yards and that many attempts and it it, it hurt 
um, making the gamble. So when you take those shots on, I mean, there's a lot of gamble quarterback names. I mean, um, Lawrence, Jackson, Fields, Herbert, Watson, Tua. All those guys are like, maybe, maybe they're, maybe it's a top five year, but they can't all be that. They can't all do it. I mean, there's going to be a hierarchy there. So, all right, we did it. We got through. You got a little extended edition of the fantasy footballers here on Saturday. Hopefully you enjoyed the draft. We'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, whether on Twitter at the FF ballers or in the comments on YouTube. And we'll be back with more episodes of the show, getting into the divisional breakdowns next week. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Farewell. Enjoy the weekend, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.